Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of the Half Baked Podcast. I'm your host, Tom. With me, I have the usuals, Nick and Vega, and a very, very special guest, Wavy WebSurf. How's it going? It's going great. It's been a long time coming. It has been. Wavy, what's up, baby? Uh, I am just chilling. I'm glad to be here with my boys that I've known for years now, and it's just manifested into the spiritual successor of the Major Minor Podcast. <laughs> okay, I, 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 I got two out of the three, baby. <laughs> we couldn't go 30 seconds without mentioning the main. Major minor podcast. The major minor podcast. It is it is really fucked up that like we started that podcast when I was like fifteen and now I'm like almost twenty. Are you saying they exploited you? Is this like <laughs> a, an expose? I'm saying they groomed me actually. I was oh, saying they God. groomed me. But thank you hey, for uh, welcome back, Vega. That's our favorite topic. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Wavy, is it true that you guys used to have like a little soundboard or inject Tom in there whenever he was not around when you guys were recording? Is that true? This is a bit of an urban legend. And I, <laughs> oh. honestly, it, there wasn't a soundboard. No, there, there wasn't a soundboard. But I, I know the story goes that there was an episode where Tom like had to go in the middle of the episode or like he could be there. So it was just me and Willie. And like I inserted parts of like Tom like laughing or something. I don't <laughs> remember doing that. But I <laughs> could have done it. You told this story at one point. I think I think I had been like in the middle of recording. And my mom was like, Tom, it's time to vacuum. And I was like, shut up. Mom, I'm being a YouTuber. Oh, she was God. like, I don't care. So I just like muted myself and left. <laughs> And so the, for the last like half hour, that's how it was. It's very well possible that I might have, you know, snagged an LOL that you did at some point and put it in there. But uh, <laughs> yeah, th- it's a bit of an urban legend that has been exaggerated, but it is true in some ways. In a lot of ways, that story is a lot like your content, where it's like everyone on the internet thinks one thing, but it's kind of an urban legend. So let's get to the bottom of what actually happened. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely bro. right, Nicholas. <laughs> the guy to actually tell the real deal. Dude, by the way, that upload you did with, uh, what is it, the meme guy? What's the meme guy's name? Behind the meme. Behind the meme. I did not know that dude did that whole suicide. and no clue. Never once. Did I see that? That was anyway. one of the uh that was definitely one of the one of the more notable things that I remember happening in like the whole YouTube, I guess drama commentary community in 2018. That's crazy. For those who don't know, behind the meme, behind the meme, you remember this guy? Yeah. He had uh, these meme yeah. explainer videos and everybody made fun of him and claimed that he was basically going to like single-handedly kill memes by making them accessible to quote unquote normies. Yeah, those normies. And he got bullied so much and there was actually good criticisms of him. Like his content was pretty low effort and honestly, anybody could have done it, but there was a lot of unreasonable hate. And basically the way he killed off his own channel after dealing with all this shit was he set up like a five part video series where he essentially walked you through this very believable staging of him committing uh, unliving if you will, where <laughs> stage one is he's like video one was him buying liquor and video two is him. Right. Oh man, I've been dealt all this bad stuff. And then in the last episode, he, you know, he offs himself. And uh, once it was revealed, you know, obviously a dead person can't upload a video. Once it was like, this guy was bullshitting. The internet got pissed at him and, uh, he pretty much left forever after that. It was kind of sad, man. Who's more realistic, him or McJuggernuggets? That five episode thing of him offing himself was more believable than anything Juggernuggets has put out. It was really <laughs> believable. Oh, God, I fucking hate that guy, dude. I'm I, story fire. Fuck you. <laughs> fuck that website. I hope the fucking URL gets purchased and they start fucking showing porn on there or something, dude. Ooh. It'll be more promising than anything we've gotten in years. Holy crap. Yeah, this is like the fourth episode. I feel like Nick has gone on a, a rant about McJugger Nuggets and Story Fire. Isn't he it? hates them. The thing is, like, we didn't even want to bring up Story Fire. He specifically was like, "How can I get them to mention Story Fire so I can like see that?" I felt that too. I felt <laughs> Dude, it. I was looking through all that stuff on that website, and like, they're now the moderators are trying to like rebuild. So when people <laughs> were complaining on Twitter, like. It's like, dude, wait, hold on, bro. It's Poogle Hall. You know Poogle Hall? I have five followers on Storyfire. Listen, it's a lot different than you last expected. We're voting on whether we should pay our creators tomorrow. Can you please log into the site? Like, shut the fuck up, bro. Get out of here, I believe bro. the deck chairs are meeting soon to discuss. Uh, <laughs> yeah, where's CoffeeZilla? This whole site was sold as an NFT, dude. Where's the scam? When is CoffeeZilla going to own them? I don't know, Tom. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's a privilege to upload. That's the way I 
I've been seeing it the whole time. Is like, that not a privilege to upload a story fire though? Like, have you really think about it? Is it? Do you need to get paid? I feel like only the best creators should be allowed. I don't know about you guys, but I got paid. I think Vega got paid. Nick, if yeah, you didn't I got get paid. paid maybe you just were not like good at making videos. Oh, good one, buddy. Yeah, no, dude. I had to do the black market video share option just to get Vega the ability to post on the website. Do you remember like when that was going through? I had an account that had the ability to post thanks to a an unknown entity helping me out, but uh, <laughs> I never posted anything to it. Right, Dude, right. I was talking to um, Tommy, right? Is this Tommy C S F T P? Yeah, he was taking a completely different stance with the website, right? Like, he started going off. He was just like, all right, dude, I'm going to test this new website. I'm going to find out what it really does. And he's like, all right, I'm going to start saying slurs in my videos. I'm going to start posting crazy shit. I'm going to start going off. And I'm like, Tommy, what are you doing? He goes, well, I'm testing if it's a free speech site. I'm like, Tommy, they never branded themselves as a, as a free speech site. So then they banned him. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy was like the first guy banned from. He was Sparky posting Fire. these like "Welcome to Story Fire" like yeah! Hitler or something. Like that. Yeah, it was like welcome. It was welcome because they were doing all those posts where it was like you know Augie was joining and like all these <laughs> other guys and they would make these custom. Those are funny. Yeah, they would make these custom community posts. It's like welcome, you know, Augie RFC, and then Tommy was like, "Welcome Adolf Hitler to Story Fire, <laughs> our newest big yeah, creator." Fucking... <laughs> Lots of things coming down the pipeline. That was you pretty know? funny. But like, not gonna lie, he kept telling me like he's gonna push the envelope and push the envelope I'm like that's good dude but this ain't that kind of site and then they banned him and he's like what the fuck oh well now i don't have fun doing this anymore never mind what the fuck and then it's the meme of the guy looking at the calendar and it says 1984 <laughs> <laughs> speaking of mcjugger nuggets do you guys re- this is kind of something in my own lane hell yeah you guys remember the, the the world of warcraft freak out kid like the guy who shoved the remote up his butt yeah 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 so those guys Legend. those guys actually recently came back to youtube like I want to say, Did you know, they? four, yeah, for like four or five months ago, and they started streaming. And well, apparently McJugger Nuggets was like huge fans of these guys because I, I want to because those videos were fake. If you're not aware, the 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 World of Warcraft freakout videos, all that guy's shit is fake. There's like 50 freakout videos from this kid. Right. McJugger Nuggets linked up with these guys and has been he he did a, a video where they basically freak out together in some weird setup that he did. But the uh, the World of Warcraft freakout guy did this live stream where he reacted to my video where I basically debunk the the World of Warcraft freakout remote video. Video. Oh, and these dudes were like, these dudes were like, this guy is just a fucking clout chasing piece of shit. Oh, oh wow. How That's could anybody dumb. think that this is not real? Like my brother really does freak out like this. <laughs> and people in the chat were like, he's just clout chasing. You guys are for real. Your brother really does have autism. Like he really is that crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like all this shit and 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 uh everybody was yeah. buying it hook line and sinker and i'm like <laughs> this is it there's i don't want to go into it you can watch my video about it but it's funny how dedicated they are to the act because i can tell that they're trolling as well coming back and sort of acting like it was fake but it's all tongue-in-cheek so they're really dedicated to the bit that's fucking awesome i remember watching that video back in like like 2010 or something and seeing yeah, him shove, like remote yeah. i thought it was real i thought it was so real <laughs> the greatest free Freak out ever by Waffle Pone or Waffle Own is the channel. He had like tidy whities on, right? And he showed a remote up his ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has boxers and he's like screaming and grunting like, a, like, a, <laughs> like a fucking. <laughs> he like hits his head against the bed. He's like he <laughs> he like flops around. It was awesome. Yeah, he sounds like a maniac, like a fucking deer with rabies that just got blasted by a shotgun or something. Like he's fucking going nuts. And it's funny because McJugger Nuggets, even the people that I knew that weren't on the internet or YouTube or any of that shit, right? When that McJugger Nuggets video, that shit was mega viral. When he was outside and his and his pops had all his video games on the lawn and he ran it over with the lawnmower, it's like a John Deere ride along shit. And he ran him over and he freaked the fuck out. Everybody I knew was like, "Yeah, see, this is what's going on with these fucking millennials." Dude, like, there was what a, the yeah. Fuck? I was like, wait a minute. There was a whole <laughs> there was a whole period of YouTube. I mean, early YouTube like. I, that stuff is around 2008, you know, 2009. Yeah. I feel like there was a period at the very beginning where sketch and skit comedy things were doing well. Yeah. And then it, it moved away from that to like just straight out, f- straight up freak out videos. Like, yeah, we need to we need to we need to act as dumb as possible. I mean, think of like, you know, the videos of like Francis, like Boogie's Francis videos where he's smashing Xboxes. Yeah. It seemed like yeah. that was a, a vibe. Like, I guess no one was capable or talented enough or had the creative nuance to do anything other than just destroy stuff and act like they have a fucking mental disorder <laughs> dude speaking of boogie he beat the case oh did he i didn't hear that that's like low-key kind of breaking news like 
from yesterday, isn't it? I think so, yeah. Oh, now you dated the podcast. We gotta post this as fast as possible. Thanks, <laughs> Wavy. <laughs> Breaking news. No, he, th- he made a video about it, right? No, I just heard Clown's new podcast that he posted, and he goes, Right, so the episode was age-restricted yesterday. Uh, Meanwhile, uh, like, they got the age restriction off, like, two months ago or something. Oh, like, dude, yeah. Nerd's been, <laughs> nerd, nerd, nerd has been working on that podcast. Uh, there's a new podcast out with Pyrocynical, Nerd City, Colossal is Crazy. And uh, Dolan Dark. Dolan Dark. Yeah. Yes. Not listening. It's called TBH, I think. It's really smooth listening. I liked it a lot. Um, I commented on it, though. I go, dude, the quality on this episode is insane. I highly doubt there'll be a second episode. <laughs> 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 what do they do? They do any visuals or, or just? The, yeah, the sound? all visuals. It's oh, basically really? a video. <laughs> I don't necessarily know about Pyro and Dolan, but when it's nerd and clown involved, it's going to take a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It looks like they took the the Cast Thirty Three vibes. That's all right. Don't credit me in the in the description, boys. It's all right. You can take you can take. But my dude, vibes. clown's fucking back. Okay, I know everyone says he's lazy. He's not fucking lazy. He yes, he right. is. Look at he's <laughs> he's he got is. this thing out. He's got this thing out. He's going to be on our podcast this week. By the time you guys hear this, we've already fucking recorded it. Probably. I love how Nick says that. It's just I think he just. You're saying the ongoing like six year old meme about Colossal being lazy is just defamation? No, it is not defamation. It might, it might have been true back then, but he seems on the grind set now, the Sigma male grind set. I can't wait for Nick, to, uh, all that to just blow up in Nick's face. For him to be like, yeah, well, he didn't show up. Uh, sorry about that, guy. One of the most regrettable moments of my live appearances on podcasts, which there's not many of them, but several, <laughs> but several of them are on Tommy C. Shot from the Point. Oh yes, sir. So I remember that. There was a period of time for some reason where I was just like, I thought Clown was like. He's overrated, bro. Like, I thought he was, like, people gave him too much dap and, like, he never uploaded. So there's this podcast, this infamous podcast on Shot from the Point somewhere. If you're interested, anybody, you can find it. Where It's a cringe fest where I get, bl- I'm, like, blackout wasted <laughs> off of Evan Williams' liquor. Yep. And I'm like, yo, Tommy, what do you, man, how did it feel to get kicked off the baited podcast, man? <laughs> And, yo, that's so, I love yeah. that show, man. And I'm like, uh, dude, dude, I think Clown's overrated, bro. Like, he's really <laughs> overrated. And Tommy's like, oh, Damn. really? Like, why do you think that? Explain it. And I was like, man, it's just what the people have been saying. It's like, I'm like <laughs> this is the more random shit. I said, I said, I was like, dude, it's what the. It's like I don't know. I got a Discord, and there's like people in the Discord saying it, dog. And he's like. <laughs> You could tell it was like really pissing Tommy off. And like, I do not think Clown is overrated, by the way. Like, but the whole thing was a cringe fest. And like, Tommy ended up basically like being so irritated that he just was borderline about to throw me off the show. <laughs> it was rough. Was that when your first time? Yes, it was my first appearance. I had like 5,000 subscribers at the time. And I was so nervous that I had to get blackout drunk. Was that the one where afterwards you like collapsed? I can't remember if that was. No, I was, I had no, no, no that was one. the interview. That was the interview. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I thought it was the same one, Nick. Like, oh, was it's, it? was I'm it pretty sure it's the one? same. There, I think there, I think he's right. I think there are multiple drunk ones. You had like 10K when you passed out. Because I remember remember like there's the one where he's like uh where you disconnect and then come back and you're like whoa tommy are we still on the air and then tommy's like in the middle of promoting dave he's like dead on dave <laughs> come on go check out dead on dave and you're like hey tommy are we still live shut up dead on dave <laughs> actually i'm 95 percent certain that that was the same episode i swear to god so if anybody wants to cross reference it check it out and post clips to twitter and make me look like a jackass i don't care <laughs> So many classic moments in one podcast. Dude, this motherfucker, this motherfucker was talking to Tommy and he's like, wait a minute, Tommy, the people want you to actually answer this question. So why'd you get kicked <laughs> off the Now listen here, Tommy, I got a question from the people, <laughs> man. I got a... I got- <laughs> <laughs> then you know, Tommy, I'm the people's champ, man. Okay, speaking of which, do we all think about the the Nerd City episode that he uploaded for Jay Station? Oh, it was the best video that's come out in the last two years. Yeah, for me, it was like nine plus out of ten video. Nice. I can't really say there was much wrong with it. It was awesome. It was fucking epic. I felt like there hasn't been a rush video where everyone drops what they're doing and watches it in a very long time. It's part of the reason why I think the community is so fucking dead. I haven't finished it. <laughs> I feel bad. I have. 
haven't I haven't watched all of it. I've seen it multiple times. I saw it immediately. And actually, do you know there's a meme that people think I'm I was partially responsible for them releasing it, but that's not true. Well, it had to so be. So like yeah. the night before he dropped it, I tweeted at Clown being like, "Clown, release your video." And he's like, "Okay." And then the next morning he actually put it out. That was already like planned apparently. But people were like, "Well, no, it Nick had to, it had to be planned, it. yeah." Yeah. <laughs> Then when it came out, it was so good. You were like, do you want to be friends? And I think you got ignored or something. Dude, I was... To- no, no, no. Did you see what happened with all that? Wavy, you were there, so you can comment on it. With the bow Black stuff. Oh, yeah. So this was... Uh, yeah, I can get, I can actually sh- shine some insight onto this. So there's this. Uh, there was this drama that happened, I guess, two or three weeks ago, where um, Nerd City had released his J-Station video... And at the end of the video, he linked to his Discord, which is like his Discord, which is uh, the community surrounding his NFT project. And uh, everybody was invited to come in and sort of uh, do like a, you know, chat with Nerd and chat with the people involved in the server. And I related to the video. It was like a video watch party post talk. Yeah. And I happened to be on the uh, stage as well because I'm in. I'm a I'm an NFT shill and I'm in the server to scam. Yes. So. So Bo Black's like we were talking, me and Nerd were talking about just whatever. It was all NFT stuff. And like I happened to notice that Bo Black's was in the stage chat, like in the little waiting thing. He wasn't even raising his hand or anything. Like he was just in there. Oh, I saw this. Yes. 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 yes, yes. I saw so, this. Yeah, go. Wavy, you literally said some shit like, oh, hey, uh, it looks like Bo Black's is down there. And Nerd's like, oh, Bo Black's. I hate that guy. <laughs> yeah. So I totally kind of like I did not know that there was bad blood between these two. In hindsight. I would not have done this, but like I saw Bo Blacks and I was like, oh shit, Bo Blacks is down there. Man, I love that guy. And Nerd City is like, well, a matter of fact, I fucking hate this guy. And let me explain oh. why. <laughs> and he goes in and tells his, you know, experience where Bo Blacks. He was in a cave. Yeah, yeah, it was a cave. Okay. <laughs> Apparently there, apparently there was some weird, apparently there was some weird arc where Bo Blacks had posted photos of himself in a cave where he was like spelunking by himself. Right. And like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. he yeah. gave him some, he gave him advice. Like, this is a bad idea. You don't need to spelunk in a cave. But there was another reason that nerd had an issue with him. And it was because of the fucking uh, video that he made about the YouTube uh, what is it? What is it? The thing where he the found secret out the, codes, right? Yeah. The secret codes. And he was saying that uh, whenever he released that list of uh, that document that contained all of the like li- the words that would get your video demonetized, Bo Blacks apparently had made a bunch of tweets that was saying, this is obviously stupid. This doesn't make sense because there were words like dinner on there or something. And uh, I think it came out that Nerd was actually correct. And I'm pretty sure Bo Blacks apologized or something. But apparently Nerd is not not interested in associating with Bo Blacks anymore. That's the moral of the story. He holds grudges, dude. Yeah. Not a, it's not even a negative character. I mean, maybe it is, but like I get it to a degree. Let me give you my side of this now as Tom so rudely explained <laughs> yeah, sorry. the ending part to it. <laughs> Okay, so I reflected on all of this saying, all right, I had a bad drama with Nerd City, a really stupid one. It was the start of my channel. It went on for like two fucking years. I made some okay points. I made some terrible points. It's not something I look fondly on. Uh, And for people who want to be like, oh, well, Nick, what did you get wrong? Particularly the stuff around Kappa in relation to his original Jake Paul video and, and sort of blaming him for that. I still think there's problems with his Lele Pons video. I still think there's problems with his Jake Paul video. But I think this got taken to such a huge degree where it never should have. I think the initial criticism was a snowball and it probably, it shouldn't have gone on nearly as long as it has. And I, I regret part of that. So um, lo- long story short, fast forward to today, right? A lot of these guys have defended me in the past. Tommy has, it hasn't burned his relationship with Nerd City. Augie has. I'm I'm pretty sure I was in the trenches with Bo Blacks talking about those YouTube secret codes. And I don't even know if I apologized for that. So I, I'm pretty sure I've arguably done worse than all of these people in this situation, at least I would assume from nerd's eyes, but I'm not the one who's blocked those people are with the exception of Tommy, right? I'll have like a casual conversation. We'll have like a casual interaction. He'll like a tweet every now and then. He'll ask me a question in DMs. Like I have like a a semi-casual, okay, he still probably hates me, but like, you know, I'm not blocked, ousted, never work with that guy again, never talk to that guy again, like Bo Blacks and all. I felt bad. I thought those guys were just trying to help me. And it's it, it seems like Nerd holds them to a completely different standard than he does me. So I reached out to Keemstar asking, 
asking him, is there anything I can do to try to like smooth things over? I don't want to fight with this guy again. I have no interest in restarting this conflict. And he goes, dude, I know one way that you can make a great fucking gesture. So needless to say, Keemstar has convinced me to give him a thousand dollars of my own money. And then in turn, he would give me a thousand dollars of Ethereum <laughs> and he would try to explain NFTs to me. Yes, I got groomed into learning NFTs because I wanted to apologize to Nerd City. And now I have spent a thousand dollars on png images <laughs> uh, and, and uh I, I own three of nerd cities i also have a goat soup which was made by andy milanakis and i've invested in other things i now have i can get a uh, the nerd city profile pic when he releases it it's just funny because like after the whole conflict with Boblax, he bans that guy from the server and then i waltz in and i get a free nft from nerd city <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, did you <laughs> like did you leak his DMs and all that stuff? Like, what did you do, Nick? That, that... DMs have been leaked. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We had a really fucking messy like uh, feud or whatever. Like, um, he was going in fans DMs and like telling them about me, Boblex, and Augie about how we're actually bad people and trying to individually argue with fans and shit like that. We have leaked DMs. This hasn't been a positive interaction at all whatsoever I, I don't expect to ever be friends with the guy but i kind of just wanted to plead with him i meant i sent him a message too that like i don't know dude i'm probably worse than augie and boblax in this situation you should cut those guys some slack i don't need to be friends with him that's good that's good on you for saying that let me ask you this though if i was nurse i would fuck you period man i'll say fuck you the way you handle that shit i'll say fuck you all day man that's why i'm surprised that like the communication line is open all right, yeah, cool i kind of agree with vega in the sense that he has he owes no obligation to yeah to, I mean, it's like it, it was commentary war, you know, like there's no reason why they should have yeah. to at the end of the and day. And that's why it's just a gesture. It's not like a, you, you're you forced to be my friend or you're forced to reconcile with me. It's that I, I saw the opportunity. I made a gesture. Yeah. At the end of the day, now I have $600 worth of NFTs that I could probably flip down the line. Hopefully, hopefully. Which is the real takeaway from the entire drama interaction. Okay. <laughs> it's not like I put myself out, you know what I mean? So two things, right? You're saying that on the criticism and all that stuff, I would say my personal opinion, right? The way you guys go about the criticism is the problem. The criticisms, and Nerd City's my boy. I love that guy, man. But the criticisms of those videos, all of them are valid, right? They are. Whether you like it or not, I don't give a fuck who's listening. They are valid, right? Taking people out of context and all that stuff. The videos themselves are little masterpieces, right? The way they're edited, the way they're presented, the structure and all that stuff. But these these little and that was know. my issues with those videos. You're right, they yeah. are masterpieces. But you guys they, go no, so on. fucking on, hard. They Nick, are. You guys are. They are masterpieces. Jesus. They are so meticulously edited. So when I found things that really annoyed me about them, I was like, "There's no way this is here accidentally." And that was part of the reason why I was so annoyed about but it. But that's what makes the criticism valid. Yeah, I could talk to you about this drama the whole time or whatever. I'm, I'm going to stick to only things that are now publicly known. It's like, I don't know, dude. Yeah, you could say that I've been like a total dick. I also didn't like when he went on shot from the point and when I wasn't there and talked a bunch of shit about me and then argued first and stuff like that. Like we've had like back and forth to this drama. It wasn't unrelented, like go and fucking bash this guy as hard as we can. That was one of those ones where he felt, he seemed like he was like, personally hurt like by that stuff yeah i would say i i would side on nerd city on that one because that one was like it seemed like nerd city was almost like trying to do that thing where you know he's with the boys yeah but my video had a hundred views vega okay so he, he went on the stream to like light me up when I wasn't there about a hundred view video. But it wasn't it wasn't like a view thing. He saw you as like Tommy's. He saw you as like Tommy's friend. Tommy's like yeah. compatriot. I don't know what word you would use. He took it personally. I believe he actually says that in the episode of Shot for the Point where he's like, I I still feel like I'm part of you know I'm part of the boys. I'm like part of this community. Yeah. So he reached out, you know, gave you the at least the respect to respond to your video. Yeah, and when and when they started shitting on him, I was like, damn, that wasn't necessary you know like and that was the i guess that was the lesson for him that he felt he needed to sort of distance himself and that's why i say if he said fuck you forever i would not just you everybody you know that he came from that you have a very low tolerance yeah i'm happy to see though that you guys are at least cautionary allies now i agree i agree I would prefer everybody but gets the, along. The main <laughs> takeaway is that that drama started between me and him, and a lot of people got their hands dirty when they probably shouldn't have. And I can't, like, force him to, like, reconcile with those people, but at least I tried. Right, right. It's become kind of a joke in the group that, like, Nerd City hates all those guys. And then, like, I'll, I'm like, all right, I'll check his Twitter and see what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because you're not blocked. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just... Because yeah, I'm, like, the... I, I'm literally the person who caused all of this, so that it's like, all right, well, I'll reach out to him. Well, Willie, Willie definitely... 
definitely fucking was a big catalyst for that hatred too because oh. he fucking <laughs> really spurred out on this one dude yeah, yeah. i thought willie's videos were good i liked his two videos he made yeah there's a lot of little dramas from back in the day though around that time that i i'm trying to remember like i feel like they've been memory holes i almost forgot about willie until way mentioned it dude i forgot about willie's drama with nerd willie is my boy i haven't watched that video in a while but that was like that was like a super fucking heated yeah, video. and it, it was the Lele Pons video. That was what he was breaking down. I think me, Vega, and Willie are still kind of on like, that was a kind of a weird thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I will always say, I, I, even if somebody was to, to be like, yo, you know what? Fuck you, Vega. I'm telling you the truth. You know what I'm saying? For me, when you're bringing up all kinds of stuff, I'm always going to be on the side of, bro, we're uploading videos. I don't give a fuck if your kid comes over here and sees my shit and all of a sudden fucking I'm an asshole. You know what I mean? Fucking I need to be responsible with my shit. I'm uploading what I need to do. Yeah, I don't care what you say, bro. He he was always very like, think of the children. Yeah. And that was always something. And that's a that, criticism like, I agree with, you know, but it is what it is. Yeah. and But when it's like the focal point of the content, that was always a catalyst for why I would like engage with that yeah. i don't think there's that many people who are so like who make that like the front line of their defense i don't know this one the j station one i felt a little bit of that amazing i uh, felt a little bit of that so i did disagree with some of the stuff that they were saying but it was more clowning it was more fun it was more you know it was more chilling yeah dude i noticed that too i thought it was really well done yeah, but one of them is a skit but of a latina girl dancing the other one is fucking like opening yourself up giving yourself surgery raping elmo <laughs> um fucking murdering yourself on screen like there's a I even yeah even though i disagree with the defend the kids argument and stuff i don't know i think they made a better argument a better case for it in that video true i still disagree mm -hmm. but it's still it's it is what it is that's your opinion that's your worldview i disagree with it but hey video was a banger all good i don't like that that is presented in that manner to where it's like oh he's manipulating you know what dude don't have your kid on the internet i don't give a fuck you know what I mean? <laughs> Fucking, that's my stance. But they put it out. It was a banger. All good. Like, my, my brain is what if for some reason, I don't even know if this happened. I'm sure if it did, we'll find out. What if YouTube saw his video about Elmo accidentally puts that shit into YouTube kids? A fucking parent opens it, writes a letter, and now the fucking government's looking into YouTube a bit more. I mean, obviously, that's a I nuclear think that there's a criteria, thing, right? though. No, because content gets on YouTube kids all the time. It doesn't belong there. They had to remove all the Oh, really? Paul stuff. Okay. Yeah, like, that's possible. So it's like, if I'm gonna sit here and say Nerd City's video on Jake Paul is lawsuit bait, I have to point out that JayStation's content is lawsuit bait. You know what I mean? Right, I, right. I really have to at that point. Oh, see, I didn't know. Did they present that in the video? I don't remember that. I don't know if they... they if they did, but that was what what I was thinking is that like I was thoroughly confirmed by the end, like by the end of the video. If Jay was unchecked and allowed to keep going, I would be afraid of a uh, of like, that would have been a good point because I didn't even think of that. Yeah. yeah, he's definitely an example of when it goes too far and it like really starts getting YouTube starts getting concerned about it. But not only that, it's just going to be a matter of time before somebody in the media gets it and it becomes a fucking huge problem. Right. Like that's just undeniably the truth about Jay Station. Right, right, right. And I was very opposed to even this. I think I have a stream of my channel talking about how like nerd city and colossal are coming to fucking cancel jc there's like a stream i did which i completely disagree with if you were like walking away from the lele ponds thing the whole j station video beforehand you would have probably thought that they were going to do something like that they were going to make some angle where this is like it's bad for the kids but it actually kind of fucking was so like <laughs> <laughs> Their whole angle about that video, I think, was solid. Like, yeah, it was ridiculous. Absolutely. I still, I still, li I'm always gonna fall back on uh, what I'm talking about. But I mean. You know, that's how it is. It's going to be hard to convince Vega on the Satanism segment, but he actually believed that shit, bro. <laughs> he actually <laughs> believed that he fucking sold his soul to Satan. It was good, too, man. Dude, the way, I mean, the the, the way they structured it, the compositions of some of the shots and the way he edited, dude, it was so oh, good, it's, man. It's paced so well, too. I like, fuck, man. I mean, he's no Lord Vega, but I mean, you I know know. I mean he's pretty good. He's pretty good. There's one <laughs> clip where they do an Elmo impression. It's like on the screen is like one of the sexual assault victims. It's like, no, it's Kermit, put, isn't it? Uh, Kermit, Kermit the Frog, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Kermit, yeah. He put his finger inside of me. Dude, yeah, listen, listen, <laughs> Nick, this is what I'm talking about, boys. This is what I'm talking about. When when it was getting to a point, if you go back and rewatch the video, right, it was getting to the point where I was just like, man, you know, in my head, I'm like, fuck, man, are we going down this road again? And then the Kermit interview happened. I was like, that's what the fuck I'm talking about right 
right there, bro. <laughs> That's what we need right there, man. It was so good. It was yes, that, and it was the guys. He made me drink the gay potion. Yes. I didn't want to do it, but I felt like I had to. I was pressured into it. It was great, bro. Could you believe yeah. that that guy was interviewed for fucking like clown and nerds documentary, and he still talked like he was in the J video? Right. Are you sure? Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Are you sure that's from their interview? Because yes. I thought that was like from a video that he made. No, no. They they're, they definitely interviewed him while he was talking talking like that i don't know if it was that specific clip but he was just like so yes guys jay made me do crazy things or something like that. <laughs> yeah. uh, i was i was gonna say like I, okay so it wasn't the actual video of him saying the gay potion thing like could you imagine if clown was like so could you tell us something about ner something about jay station that was uh just reprehensible and he was like well he made me drink the gay potion oh it's and worse was <laughs> he was trying to make it a pedo angle it's like he made me drink the gay potion while i was a minor <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what is the gay potion? Like, what's in it, you think? Is it a, does it have a color? Yeah, <laughs> the ingredients. You drink, like, the fucking chug jug from fucking Fortnite, and then all of a sudden your shirt, like, goes up and stuff like that. You're wearing lipstick and glitter, and all of a sudden you're talking. Before you know, you're I'm Alex. Yeah. <laughs> it just happens overnight. You guys think I'll get on a government list by Googling J Station gay potions? Oh, my God. <laughs> just being in this community and having just conversations, you'll start Googling shit that you're probably on a list anyway, because you won't Google that in private. Yeah. Yeah. But you're Google it just by bullshitting. The, dude, number one thing of uh, being a commentary YouTuber is when you type A into Google search, it'll pop up age of consent, Washington State, <laughs> age of consent, Florida, age of consent. <laughs> Crazy shit, man. <laughs> Those are all the related searches. I want to bring you back to the NFT meme. Are, are you like a uh, oh, I'm getting an early drink. adopter of the dead avatar project like I am, Wavy? Are it's we going to be millionaires together? As they say in the crypto world, I'm a... I'm a whale of dead avatars. Ooh. Let's just say that. Did you end up getting the free one, the free NFT that they mailed to your house too? Yes. I will hopefully when it gets here, but like, yeah, I, I signed up for that shit. Bruh, that shit's dope. What kind of NFT mail shit to you? I mean, like, that's cool. Look, I don't like like NFTs, bro. I don't have any NFTs except for like the Nerd City one only because I believe in the guy's creative ability and his marketing ability. And I know we're not going to get fucked over because if we get fucked over, his reputation's on the line. It's not like some fly by night dude with a monkey picture that's trying to like sell you an NFT. Like 90% of NFTs, yes, they are without a doubt retarded. Like they're <laughs> stupid as fuck. But if there's someone that's actually creative and you believe in them, why not? You know? And you know it. for a fact all those fucking losers in the comments. Because by the way, if you don't know this, unfortunately, and I believe it's been rectified now, you can correct me if I'm wrong. NFT retards flagged their fucking J Station video and got it age restricted. Like the guy took ownership and posted that he got the email saying that like we took action or something. There was somebody that flagged his video and were they were trying to say that it violated COPPA because he was advertising NFTs to children. Which makes it, it's not what happened yeah, at all. Yeah, nobody understands the law. We've learned that. Not so. only is that even like a plausible thing to happen, the reason it really got age restricted was because of the scenes where he was cutting open J Station was cutting open his body double. Yeah. Like it was like violence or something. What a time to come back. <laughs> what? <laughs> I will tell you one thing, though. I do think Nerd City has the kind of staying power on YouTube where once he posts this NFT video, either one of two things is going to happen. It's going to do some damage to him, which is what I've seen on Reddit. They're really mad that he did that on his own server. But I don't think that's actually going to happen. What I think is going to happen is there's going to be like a million fucking people who fucking hated NFTs. It was their personality yesterday. They just went on Twitter and said, fuck you, parallelogram, fucking profile pick, loser. And they're going to be the biggest NFT advocates, okay? Okay. All these people are going to start investing like crazy because they watch one nerd city video that told them that NFTs were good. And I genuinely fucking think that like all of the annoying people on Twitter are going to go away. Hmm. I hope so. That's the impact that he has on the space. That would be the one positive outcome. The Redditors fuck off for one. I actually very much agree with you. I, it seems like as far as sentiments and people when it comes to what we should hate online, it's literally determined by like fucking Mudahar and Charlie 90% of the time and people like nerds. Literally, City. if Charlie came out and said NFTs were good, I think that would have a huge impact too. I mean, that's just how it goes, man. It's like Reddit just follows the big YouTubers. It's how it's always been. Like, mm -hmm. 
it seems like it's like NFTs seem like this existential problem that needs to be defeated. Well, that's until a YouTuber you like makes a video about it. Yeah, I saw him like slap uh, Jay Aubrey around on Twitter. Jay Aubrey's whole Twitter account is just like, here's the popular take. I'm going to just get some likes and leave. Like that's kind of his Twitter. He doesn't make any profound, controversial statements. I, I think he does actually hold those opinions. Like it's He not probably like does, but it was very clear he had no idea what he was talking about when nerds started probing in my opinion like the thing on twitter that he does is it's like there's a lot of twitter accounts that do this it's just like it's kind of like reading the room of social media and then just making the most telegraph joke possible that'll get as many fucking likes right 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 and that's that's kind of the extent of what i see his twitter account as yeah i'm pretty much in the same i mean i do dude i've everybody has done that before like just you know you seize the opportunity of a pretty obvious joke that's might be a little like intellectually dishonest but fuck it but like every tweet you know i I don't know about that. Yeah, I probably agree with that. <laughs> Vegas, like, yeah, we're a little intellectually dishonest sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. No, no, no. I don't. I, I don't know if I if I don't know something and I give a take and then I find out that I'm wrong, then it's like, oh fuck, yeah, I fucked up or whatever. You know, that doesn't like define me. That's not like a mark on me, right? For me anyway. If if for you, I I guess. Yeah. You know, fine. Have fun with it. I don't give a fuck. You know, whatever, dude. I try to avoid the Twitter hot takes altogether. I just post retarded shit. I think that's the best way to go. More people need to do that. Yeah, Tom's Twitter is like I just opened a Red Bull and I'm listening to Slipknot. You <laughs> really can't go wrong, dude. There. Tom's Twitter is a shit show, bro. Wait, there's there's like two types of people on Twitter, dude. There's like people who try to post like, I don't know, their profound fucking opinions and wasted shit. It's like you're trying to have an opinion on something. You're trying to explain something. You're trying to like debate something. Or you're like the guy who posts like, lol, big chungy wungy, get big retweet. <laughs> There's profound takes and, and prolapsed anuses on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's I, I can't stand that stuff. That's like what all the Twitch guys do. Like those like, Twitch <laughs> people, they'll always be like, LOL fat chunk is 420. This is like it's, it's like they're like and it gets like it's like fat chunk is 420, 20,000 likes, 5,000. <laughs> I love those. They're so like good. Dude, that was like Call Me Carson for a long time. He, he would just post like a lol and get 100k likes. I see Omni doing that too. I love Omni. I have nothing against him. Dude, dude like... I make look at this tweet. This is a banger tweet. If you oh, disagree, God. Jesus general, Christ. This is a great fucking Tom, tweet. Tom, it better not be from your own Twitter. It's <laughs> not from your timeline, is it? No, no, it's not. It's not. I promise. It's, it's literally your timeline. <laughs> what, look, it's, it's a funny it's tweet. Your this is your tweet, Tom. <laughs> dude, Tom posts shit that would get like. I don't know, the school counselor called on him if he was still in high school. It's like, hey, Tom, <laughs> you've, been, you've been tweeting a lot of uh, Doomer-pilled Wojaks recently. Is everything all right at home? Well, if you remember years uh, ago, I <laughs> tweeted like I tweeted some shit that got like, the FBI to come to my house. <laughs> yeah, Dude, Tom, Tom is like low-key. Like, you're becoming a micro-Wang account, dude. Like, your tweets are having a hell of, en hell of engagement, bro. Yeah, but then you have, like, Wang's, like, throwing bangers, and then Tom's just somehow farmed the emo side of Twitter. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's the weird shit. It my opinion, I think Tom is probably the most influencer esque person in the commentary community. That's like the drama, like the whatever the legion, whatever you want to call it. Tom is without a shadow of a doubt the biggest fucking name in commentary right now. He's the guy. He is. It's not small commentary anymore. It's it, what is this? Is it the legion? What the fuck are we calling it now? What do you guys? The goon Every squad. The goon squad. Yeah, no, I'm not calling it that. Chris Hansen called us that. I, like I call that. it the coom squad. squad. <laughs> oh, the coom squad. Yeah. The Coob Squad, led by Incel Augie. The Groom Squad. The Groom Squad, <laughs> led by Lion Maker. Oh, God. The Groom Squad. <laughs> the Groom Squad. <laughs> yeah, you got uh, brides and grooms, you know? All right, we, we have to fucking get the elephant in the room out of the way. All right, Wavy. Okay. I need to ask you questions about Tipster. What's going on with this guy? I know you're like the boomer connoisseur, so like you love the Review Tech USA memes and all that stuff. <laughs> Have you guys seen that yesterday Tipster posted 12 videos to his YouTube channel at the same time and blew up everyone's notifications? And as a result of doing that, lost 1,000 subscribers and counting. Oh, I don't know. Okay, so was it videos on his main channel or what? Tipster's like a dipshit, right? So he'll- <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> dude, dude, he's just like, well, should I keep my streams members only? or private or unlisted or public so if you make a video that's never been public public it'll post with a with a link or whatever like it'll go out the right. notice will go out that's correct i see so he must have he had all those streams like 20 unlisted. fucking streams wavy oh my god so your fucking whole notification was swamped dude he like sexually assaulted my notification yes and then today <laughs> i get screenshots sent to me apparently he posted six clips on tipster clips at the same time like he posted six 
fucking videos today. This guy's like posting tons of content. I don't know. Well, it's got to be like riding the algorithm, right? That's kind of like the plan. No, they're be. not doing well. It got like 50 views. Yeah, it seems like it was something he totally did by accident. I'm quite a big fan of the the tipster Twitter Twitter metaverse that has oh, become uh, a thing. <laughs> really? The, Is that the one where he's got a billion whores? Is that it was it? like a week where there was banished journo different Twitters. Oh. Like where there would be a character that was different where you couldn't tell it was like not tipster. And they were all just making crazy tweets like LMFAO hashtag tipster news. I just fucked four bitches. Yeah. Wall. Like they were just. <laughs> Dude, and then he'd get into drama. Like I think one of them was unironically debating technicals more than us. But he was doing it from tipster's perspective. So the audience thought tipster was like fucking <laughs> swinging, dude. Dude, I, I do. I do remember that like technicals had like a genuine interaction with the fake one. And uh, somebody was like, you know, this is a fake account. And technicals, technicals was like, fuck it. This is still how I feel. That's on God. <laughs> you know, it was like, damn, son. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, so I, this is something fucked we did. By the way, this whole thing started from me. It was my mistake. Uh, not a mistake. I would do it a hundred times over. You don't say, Nick. I'm surprised, actually. All right. Do you know the lore of how this started? How what started? Just pick pick a drama, Nick, and, and roll with it. Augie told me, he goes, all right, Nick, I'll be right back. Uh, just hold down the stream while I'm gone. I'm like, okay, guys, we have five minutes. We're going to bring the fuck out of tipster everyone get into his chat and say exactly what i say okay i'm sorry i heard about your divorce i hope everything's okay or something like that and then they spam the shit out of him so tipster's like what my divorce what's <laughs> going on and then i'm just giggling my ass off i like that your impression of him is like a mentally disabled like <laughs> Like, like just someone so, who has, he's like severely handicapped and so cannot we, like speak. So I used Augie's audience to raid the shit out of Tipster while he was streaming. And he's just like, what's going on? I'm not getting divorced. What's going on? And there was like this already brewing meme in the background of like Hannah Animal and like the Tipster Ethod Association and shit like that. <laughs> and these things like combined into one. They like fucking became a cancer and they started spreading <laughs> fucking all through the community. Yo, no, you guys, okay, hold on a second. You guys are literally pulling like Wings of Redemption gay ops on Tipster, right? <laughs> Now. Gee, gee, you know, Nick, I can't, I can't imagine why somebody would not want to be your friend. That's so crazy. <laughs> That's right. That sounds amazing. Yo, so why would, wouldn't shit. your friend love seeing oh, that? Oh, dude, it's dude. Tipster's a funny fucking guy. I don't yeah. know. So this was what we were building to. Okay. Yeah. So Augie mods Banish Germo mm. in his chat as like a moderator for his thing. Right. So Banish Germo, cause he's a psychopath, right? Oh, is he actually like a low key, like insane person? No, 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 no. He's, he's a funny guy. Okay, 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 good. No, I don't wanna, I don't wanna slander the mans, right? But he gets on this fucking account and he changes his name immediately to Tipster without our knowledge, okay? So now after we told Tipster we were gonna kind of chill on the jokes or whatever, we have a Tipster with a blue check mark, like wrench symbol in Augie's chat writing outrageous shit. <laughs> and he's just like, dude, I swear to God, I would fuck all these whores and fucking uh and he's like sniping at people in the call and stuff like that and then the real tipster shows up in chat and goes why is there a verified fake me in the chat <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a thing on youtube <laughs> How does it get verified? Doesn't it have to have like a hundred thousand. Well, no, it wasn't verified. It was. It was the like. Why did you moderate a fake tipster oh, and okay. didn't talk about pretending he's me? Like the whole point of moderating is to get the right one moderated, so this doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, a wrench might as well be a verification tick if you were just looking at the chat scrolling by. I was I was trying to get on Boogie. I think we moved back off yeah, of Boogie. We mentioned it. I did you have you guys watched his video about like where he comes back and explains what happened? I have not. I didn't see his video. He no. kinda over explained some stuff. Yeah, like, he, he said you know what I mean? but he explained a lot without explaining very much though. He was like apparently he's still on the hook, but it's like deferred for a few years and his lawyers are saying that he's gonna be fine. Is that what you understood from it, Nick? Yes, that's that's basically what I got from it. It's like uh I think that they want to make an example out of him in some way but not necessarily send him to jail that's what i kind of took away from the whole situation it's crazy because i had a conversation with i can't remember who this was uh, for the life of me i had a conversation about the whole boogie situation right and i had to even mute this person because i can hear his i can hear his sarcasm it was me it, it was just it one of those things where i called everything just beat for is, beat was it everything me? needed to occur you're I, way I too smug Nick. for it not to be me so i, I don't I, your I, own? You know, was you it you me? are you gonna own me right 
right was now? Was it you? I don't know. I don't. Remember. I have no recollection of the conversation. I just remember. The way you're saying it, you're implying heavily just, that it was me. I just remember when that whole shit went down and yeah. everybody was scrambling. I was just like, "What the fuck are you guys talking about?" Yeah. Bro? Here's a intro. So Vega called it. Is what he's saying. Well, Vega calls everything, but let's just forget about that. Go Here's ahead. a interesting development that I have noticed pop up on Twitter is that uh, so Boogie announced, I believe he would be selling some merch in that video. <laughs> one of the T-shirts. <laughs> actually did. One of, yes. Well, yeah, but that's fine. Whatever. But one of the merch designs is like an image from Frank Hassel's video recording of him. The famous image of Boogie shooting the warning shot. Oh, yeah. That was recorded by Frank Hassel. So like the Wings of Redemption, Dark Side Phil level trolls that are going after Boogie right. are saying that Frank Hassel Castle owns the copyright to that photo and are like now harassing him on Twitter and like, you know, telling Frank Hassel, like Boogie selling your copyrighted images as merch and shit like that. Oh, please. Dude. So you can only imagine what what's going to happen next. Like it's Frank like he's going to sue him for copyright abuse, isn't he? Deservedly, I would man. Hoped, yeah. I would, <laughs> Actually, what happened to him? What happened to the dude that was recording? Not, anything happened to him? No, he got off. He got a uh, Wojak tattoo. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> the court was like, we find you uh, guilty. We find you're, you based. You're, yeah, you, you have to get a Wojak tattoo and then you can go home. We find you based. <laughs> we find you based and boogie pill. You're now free to harass whichever obese men you want. Yeah, I just don't really know where what Boogie's path forward is. I think his content is so dependent on him just talking about his situation and how down he is. It just kind of sucks. For the guy, because Look, I feel bad for that guy, but I can't feel bad for that guy. Me and Tom were going to do like a good cop, bad cop, super breakdown of Boogie last year. It didn't happen for a variety of reasons, but one of the ones that wasn't because I was not uploading a lot and was totally lazy was uh, I was on a, a Twitter space with this guy. Right. And he was like, uh, it was me, Keemstar, uh, Boogie and a few other people. You might have even have been here. Maybe Wang was there, too. I don't know who was in this thing, but I remember him going like, you know something I have to say. Some of those guys were going after me. It feels fucking good watching Pyro Cynical destroy them or something. It was like a, it was a comment like that, what right? The hell? And he was talking about Tom, like Tom's channel getting fucked. Yes. But meanwhile, I had told him that me and Tom were gonna work on a video. Like it was gonna be like fair. We weren't gonna like make a puff piece, but it was gonna be very charitable to him, right? Like we weren't gonna go in trying to bury him. He was gonna be involved in some way, shape, or form. Like the plan was to interview him, interview a lot of other people, make this huge fucking project out of it, and it'll be like a good part one and two. Well, it was especially weird because I never like I never made like an insane like boogie like troll like get owned video. No, you made one video and he DM'd you saying that your video made him want to kill himself. Yeah, like a total yeah, it wasn't video. that that big of a deal, Tom. Yeah. yeah. So I, that's why I don't like him. And also, like another part of it is like those guys. Like if not me, like who else is there? Like who does he? Yeah, somebody would have. Is he just delusional? Like I don't understand. I remember he was talking about like when there was like a commentary thing going on with technicals. He was like, and I understand what's happening. And it's that Keemstar is leaving Drama Alert, so they're all competing to replace Keemstar. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking, what? dude? That was the ad, that weird. that like that. I remember that. That was like honestly the most. Dumbass take. Yeah, he's and an idiot. so yeah. unself. It was so un like it had no read on the actual reality of what the commentary scene was. He has no. It was literally just no him brain. trying no to brain. like get a little shot at people while trying to seem neutral at the same time. It was horseshit. Dude, I was a huge fan of that guy. I really liked him. I loved his drama coverage. I loved his regular coverage. I watched that guy's rambling videos. I grew up watching Boogie Two Nine Eight Eight, so I'm always gonna like like that guy in some capacity as a creator. I think like. Like my first in argument with Tommy, my first stream call with Tommy was me bombing, trying to defend Boogie 2988 with like, um, if you want to go back and try to find this episode, it's terrible. Don't look it up. Uh, it was Ace Trainer Liam and Tommy. If they're looking up my shit episode, they look up yours. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. Like it was like one of the first things I disagreed with Tommy on. It was about the Anita Sarkeesian stuff, so you can find it fast. Ace Trainer Liam. I haven't heard that name in years. Oh, that guy's super chill. I love I love that dude, guy. Dude, Ace Trainer Liam, shout out to him. Go check him out. Yeah. Subscribe. That dude. Yeah, I used, awesome, to, I used to enjoy when Fucking he hosted. Well, but Boogie just kept doing so much stupid shit last year. Again, like I always bring this one up when he was talking about like he went on a stream with Matt Jarbo. And I'm not going to name the creator out of reasons why I've explained a hundred times, but he was talking about how, like, if he were to kill himself, that it would have a much bigger impact and he could, like, stop this all together and stuff like that. And, like, stop, like, the online harassment and bullying. He could be a martyr in comparison to other YouTubers who've taken their lives and stuff. And then I remember, like, I don't know if you know this. I don't know if I've really told anybody this. Like, this guy's 
DMing me the night of the fucking Frank Hassel shit, right? I'm not going to share what he said in those DMs, but like some of it was like delusional. That's why I don't want to talk about it in like a video form. Like he he just has some things very wrong with him and I don't really know what you can He's do about He's a sick it. fucking He's guy. Sick. Yeah. yeah, he is. Let me ask you this though. Do you think it's do you think it's it's conscious of him to do so because I feel like during the drama phase of his channel, he was by far my favorite channel out of all the drama channel or the commentary channels I should say, right? Not everyone was drama, but everybody was t- giving their takes, right? He was actually looking at both sides and actually rationalizing their perspectives and all this shit. And then he gave his final take at the end of the video. And I was like, dude, that's a, that's yeah. a, like critical thinking in at work. And he did that from in the his position video. of like YouTube's uncle, right? Like he was like, yes, he yes. Was like a lovable uncle. And then one day somebody found a video of him making a joke about like someone's fucking family getting divorced. And they're like, wow, you're not as fucking wholesome as i remembered and it became a whole thing and then boogie went crazy over that shit and then he started doing real shit about like lying about being swatted and stuff i remember because i was watching him during that time i remember he made a whole video about why he's gonna stop doing so maybe you're right i don't know but what i remember do you, do you, like you know that meme do you know that meme vega where it's like there's a little domino and it pushes over a bigger domino and a bigger domino and a bigger domino until it's like a massive cinder block, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like Boogie makes a joke about someone get who, whose parents got divorced yeah. and then it's like Boogie nearly shoots and kills Frank Hassel. Right. Like it's just like a fucking chain of events. Boogie makes fake Twitter accounts to defend himself. I was just trying to say during that time when he actually was making the, the commentary content, which was I think some of the best stuff because he would take that topic that was hot at that time and then give you the actual rational take, which nobody was doing. Everybody was taking a side or giving a crazy ass take and committing to it which is kind of the climate we're in right now, right? Or, or that's how commentary was the whole time. Yeah. He was actually taking that critical thinking portion and showing you both sides and then giving a rational take at the end. And then he made a video because he got so much hate because that's what comes with that kind of content, right? You're getting both sides of the aisle hating on you. Even though both sides might like you, there's a lot more vocal individuals that are on the negative side. So he couldn't take that and he made a video. He, didn't he do some of that like positivity shit where he's like, guys, drama content's bad. Didn't he say something? like that yeah that he, was a, i think that was after that was after yeah that was after. he came out and said drama content's bad and then he like had like tons of videos on leafy and keemstar dude i i hated <laughs> that he st- i think even keemstar made a fucking twitter video about that shit because i i remember watching him give a take on it i was like yes because i agree with keemstar because i was like dude but he couldn't ball with us he couldn't ball with us he, like, does he need to though nick if he's giving rational takes and everybody's taking a yes. side he, he needs to ball yes. with you guys well, I yeah. disagree. No, if you're if you're throwing your hat into the ring and then people come and say something to you, yeah. But if you could you take it, to. if Boogie can't take it, which clearly he could. If couldn't. you can't take it, then go back to making videos about like games. But if he could take it, then he's standing alone on a mountain. That's fine. But he's never me. been able to ever. You can't talk shit about people, and, or not even talk shit. You can't like weigh in and give your entire take on their drama and stuff like that. And then when somebody comes and goes, "Hey, I disagree with how you characterize me" or something, just put your tail between your legs and go, "Uh, uh, uh, drama's toxic." Well, it wasn't toxic when it was funding your channel last month. Yeah. Okay. Well, so listen, we agree on that. What I'm saying is, if he was able to take it, he could definitely. Con- Intend, right if he's not rocking with you guys and he can take that kind of heat that guy would be top of t- he'd be on oh some, yeah like, no I, shit. I wish things went differently i think he yeah again like he was one of my favorite youtubers i'm not gonna if he could have taken it yeah fuck that sucks though he didn't know yeah, that dude. sucks that's man. an interesting take and that he could have been a critical of like, course i i kind of see that in a way yeah, yeah like i i actually see what you mean by that go back just... to those videos if they're still up and you'll see his takes and you'll be like damn dog unless i'm mistaken then fuck me right? they were good videos but they were great drama videos it was like crippling insecurity that somehow turned into like pathological lying about a bunch of events to make himself look it's, like yeah a victim. it took a weird turn and like yeah. these insane like accusations about how like this like hatred for christopher tom which i don't really get like there's so much shit in the boogie story that you have to come through like christopher tom i think there's criticisms you could have made for his video but boogie decided to his angle on it would be that like hey christopher tom i know that you beat cancer and it's kind of a shame that you had a second lease on life and you're trying to end mine oh my lord (laughs) like how do you defend a guy who does that he's mentally ill i remember this christopher tom guy so was he the dude that blow blew open the boogie documentaries is that the thing i think he made one of the first big big ones he's a cool dude i remember it was like the first one that was climbing to a million real 
really quickly. Okay. I think Boogie credits it with like his biggest problems and stuff. Dude, this guy is like a little fucking sweetheart looking guy. I don't think that video like ended Boogie by like like by any No, means. Boogie ended himself by the way he reacted to it, and that's what created this Boogie that we know now. But it wasn't even just that. It was like that and the million other videos and the million other tweets no. and like every like every single incident of him shooting himself in the fucking foot. I I still think Tom's video is a catalyst for uh, uh Christopher Tom, not you, Tom. I'm not. Gonna <laughs> yeah, Tom's like, yeah. I made a video around that time and it got 200k views. I think I did something involved in this. I situation. I did not do any of that. Okay, fuck off. In your defense, he did write you saying that his vi- your video made him suicidal. So maybe you. Did. I just take that as like his like some manifestation of like mental illness and like like panicking or something. For Tom, it was just a weekly upload to make quota. Yeah. Isn't that weird though that if the if if Boogie didn't because you know God bless him the dude the dude's going hey he's got some mental health issues he admits it openly right just that little window into this guy's career of like content that yeah it's not highly edited none of that bullshit right there's nothing really to it but him sitting in front of the camera but he's giving you the real deal no one was doing that yeah, he's one of the and then all of a sudden it just turned into some weird shit and it's like fuck dude like fucking if you just was stuck on that path dude you would be so highly respected you know what i mean like fuck uh, I just want to uh, reminisce real quick about the times that me, Nick, and Willie and Wavy would be in a private call talking about some bullshit for like four or five hours, bro. This is when like Wavy would be in there on some like, this isn't even like, I don't even think, we, what, what would we talk about? Ace 3, Ace 3, the nuke video? What was that yeah, called? Yeah, we Commentary. watched it together. Yeah, it was the con- content nuke. Content new Keemstar. Oh my god, bro. We were this shit was heated, bro. We had a four hour debate. Yes. Basically co- trying to figure out if Keemstar was done wrong by H3 or if H3 was actually right in his criticisms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was based off everybody's first viewing where people were yelling in the background. Cause like it wasn't like I had to mute people in that call because they wouldn't shut the fuck up while it was going. <laughs> I feel like at the time we came to the conclusion that there was like several elements of the video that were valid criticisms against Keemstar, but we were also like, it's fucking really stupid that he's trying to blame him for Etika's death and that he's trying to like get rid of sponsors and stuff like that. I don't even remember what we came to but it was right. just an epic call that i remember <laughs> it was an epic call because every little portion of the video was dissected bro by it a, was. each individual i dissected as in like word for word sentence for sentence dude it was crazy that was a classic and everybody was just going back and forth dude and i remember at the end of the call i was like dude we should have fucking recorded this bro. i know <laughs> <laughs> that's what, so what we'll legendary. never know we'll never know what actually happened i only remember just like the bits and pieces cli- like yeah. the cliff notes that, that debate is the catalyst for this podcast like this podcast doesn't exist without that conversation because it was supposed to be instead of um you know mr virgin tom over here it was supposed to be <laughs> willie in that chair i think i yeah dude i actually think you're right because i remember hearing like whisperings of that like after we had that chat. Yeah. Because there was no podcast. There was like no podcast at the time. Instead of the biggest commentary YouTuber in the community, it was Willie who was supposed to take Tom's spot. Then you guys realize you could leech off of my fame. <laughs> and, uh, the rest is history. Tom, your <laughs> channel was fucking dead at the time, I think. I honestly can't remember. Yeah, when was we, this? We, yeah. we played the long game with Tom, okay? We, you guys were investing? We, we laid our fucking our seed into him. You guys came in at a great time because there was like, there was obviously like, a, you know, the commentary, commentary podcast everywhere in like 2017 and 2018 and then they completely died and there was like none of them in 2020 and then you guys came around yeah 2021. there's a few that started but they just stopped after like two episodes and now uh mudahar has a podcast fucking nerd has a podcast everybody has a podcast yeah everyone ripped off come town and come town ripped off baited yeah the only guy that's got zero clout and zero views and zero channel uploads in this podcast is me <laughs> so uh hi guys yeah but vega you're an mvp you're mvp for life in every regard so. <laughs> listen man i accept my role hello we have questions from our patreon but that uh oh. yeah if you didn't know uh, is it turkey tom type questions uh there's a couple of turkey tom questions i'm gonna how skip much influence those. do these questions have Uh-oh. i'm gonna skip those <laughs> 
So if you join our Patreon, if you didn't know, you get access to the Discord. And in the Discord, whenever we have a guest on or whenever we're recording a podcast. Or whenever we remember. I, well, I remember. I, I hop into the general chat and I ask you guys if you guys want to ask questions. Here's a question from Wavy WebSurf. So T-Play01 asks, what made Wavy so interested in commentary? All right, T-Play. So this is how it went down. I used to watch, uh, you know, I kind of, I was, when I was in college, I was watching a shit load of uh drama alert ethan klein you know the battles between leafy grade team. that was what really yeah that, that was that was what really got me interested into any kind of yep. any kind of Old community school. on youtube like i didn't even know there was such a thing as a youtube community until that which i still consider the main youtube community to be the commentary community everything else is just mid true dude wavy wavy yo me and you have the exact same origin story bro exact yeah well and you're friends with justin wang who invented memes <laughs> well fun fact i actually i actually am i'm actually single-handedly responsible for bringing wang into the commentary community he was just like doing his own thing and like didn't even know that there was like a commentary scene and Bullshit, then I brought him, really that's yeah, real yeah. i brought him into the uh what was that what was that group chat called tom the nco the, the infamous NCO. nco wang was a member because of me but you indoctrinated him into yeah so like <laughs> so like i was into uh i was into the drama stuff the old 2016 drama stuff and then uh i started fooling around making sort of like topic commentaries on my wavy web surf channel you know h3 did this today you know like the run of the mill shit from like 2017, and then you used to merch stuff, right? Yeah, I did merch videos. I did videos I that. Do so like, you hate Nerd City for kind of stealing your? I'm kidding. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I think I was actually friends with him at the time or acquaintance. Yeah, yeah. I still, I will never forgive you, Wavy, for saying Teddy Fresh was hot. Uh, I well, this is the thing about the this is the thing about dropped, the. Uh, I was like, this shit is dog shit, bro. What does it say by the bell, homie? Did I get? Did I give it a good score? Did I, I give it like an eight out of ten? Score. I think you did. Well, shit. I might, you know, no one's perfect. It got worse but, uh, over time. But uh, the, the funny, yeah, so that's how I got into the commentary community. And, you know, I started making the merch videos. And uh, they're honestly, it's like some of some of my funniest videos, I feel like. Yeah. But the whole the whole idea of that content is so degenerate because I never bought the merch. I was just like, <laughs> shit. I would just, you just go on like the page and be like, hmm, this looks like bad. It's just yeah. so good. It's such good no, quality, I would, I would guys. Go, I, would go on the, I would go on the page and be like, yeah, I mean, this is a pretty nice website, but damn, the design is just complete trash. And like, would go off. <laughs> I would never buy this, you know? Right, and, right. But that was, that was my extent into like the more traditional commentary videos. And then most of you probably know me now for my internet history deep dives, which I don't even know if those are commentary videos, but yeah. Oh, I got a question for Wavy. We can cut this shit if he doesn't want it in there. Go ahead, go, yeah, go for it. Wavy, I answer anything. Go ahead. Well, no, no, this might be a bit too personal. We might have to cut it, but. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I already know it's coming. I dick. already know it's coming. There's no way you know it's coming. <laughs> is it the Keemstar <laughs> thing? Is yeah. It the Keemstar thing? Okay. Here it right. is. It is. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, fuck. You're talking about the. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Go, go, go. Ask, ask, ask. ask. So I know for a fact that Keemstar took a shot uh, about uh, Wavy's girlfriend. Correct. Um, no shit. When did he do that? A positive one, yet it was, uh, I would say, inappropriate. Do you have a response for that? So, yes, I have a funny story. So let me explain for Vega. I think Tom knows, too. So there's some. No clue. There, yeah. Yeah, there is like a stream. It was an RFC, an Augie stream from like three months ago after VidCon. <laughs> and Keemstar was in there and he was making fun of them for how all of the photos from VidCon looked like a virgin meetup 2021, right? <laughs> <laughs> right so, right. well, I. I was like the only I brought my girlfriend Presley and she was in the photos with us and she was like the only girl in the photos so Keemstar is like they were like uh yeah Nick was like the only girl there it was uh Wavy's girlfriend and he was like I know I know and blah 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 and he before he left he was like shout out to Wavy shout out to Wavy but uh his girlfriend has a fat ass personality <laughs> nice <You know? laughs> Nice. <laughs> so, but funny story about this, right? I didn't discover this clip until about a few days ago when Tom showed me it. Oh, and I was okay. in and I was in the room with my girlfriend and I'm playing it out loud. And all she hears is Keemstar saying, shout out to Wavy. His girlfriend is fat. That's what, that's, <laughs> what? that's what she fucking that's what she heard. That's what she heard. Oh, she okay. Fucking, okay. And she fucking start dude. She almost fucking started breaking down into tears. I was like, no, 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 wow. no, no. It's not, he's not calling you fat. It's like a 
dude joke, it's suddenly hitting on you. Like yes. he said, you have a fat ass personality. He said, you have a fat ass. That's <laughs> what he's saying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so. You know, I'm confident in myself. I ain't worried about Keem Star, so yeah, no, course. I don't care. No, I have a fat ass personality. My Taco Bell's outside. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it was funny too because at the end of the clip, like you can hear Smaggle. He's like, "You can't say that she's uh, she's like underage or something." <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Like, what the, I think I said, like, what the fuck is wrong with you, Smaggle? What if he's, like, an adult? Why would you say that? Yeah. He's like, oh. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. It's so I'm dumb, sorry. Bro. I got another question. Does Wavy have any big projects down the line, question mark? Like, if he has any big interviews or anything a Wavy fan, quotes, should be excited about. And ironically, that's from Smaggle, believe it or not. Is it really? That Sm- question. <laughs> it's a great. What a great question, right? You got to be kidding ahead, me. Bro. I can not believe no I, I was surprised when i read it i was surprised well when I read it. it makes me feel bad now because i i have to admit smaggle had done some tweet where he was like these are the followers like the big youtube follows that i don't have yet and i was one of them and i didn't follow him back <laughs> Right, <laughs> but Smaggle shit. I might have to throw him a follow after this. But as far as big projects go, I don't have anything massive right now. But for a, a wavy fan, you would probably be excited about uh, the following. I have one coming out about the. Uh, there is a long mystery, and it is a YouTube poop related mystery. There is a character from the Zelda CDI games, the infamous games, you know, where the king's like my boy dinner, you know, shit like that. Yeah, there's a character in that, the shopkeeper, the big fat shopkeeper. His name is Morse you in the game and there's like this big mystery about who his voice actor is well i'm attempting to uncover this voice actor similarly to how i uncovered the guy that was behind the have you ever had a dream kid if you remember i in- i found this motherfucker and interviewed him it yes was like, i remember i saw that video yeah so that is a work in progress and then the other thing is as i am uh i'm working on getting an interview with a guy who reddit raised money to buy him like a fucking wheelchair accessible van <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's kind of an old story but that's what i've got in the works right now nice Oh, I have one more uh, random question for you. Go for it, baby. We riding. Because I know that you're you're known for a lot of videos, but the way I know you, Wavy, is being the guy who has the second best video on Zillion OP. Internet of J. Internet of J. Have you seen it? <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I knew that's what you were going to say. But uh, <laughs> shut up. Shut up. These guys shit on him way too much, baby. Come on. Shout, shout out to this. see. This is the thing. This is the thing. I hate. I hate being the guy that's just. I, I'm I'm cool with everybody. Oh, welcome to the club, Wavy. You're friends with people that hate him. Internet of Jay is. Uh, he means well. <laughs> that's the best you got. He means well. The zillion, like the the zillion OP story. <laughs> Go ahead, sorry, I'll just say this about the zillion OP story. I don't think he had a bad take, by the way. Like his take was, you know, it was right. The take he had, his opinion of the situation was zillion should have been more prudent in updating people that he was still like he could walk a little bit or whatever, which. Zillion admitted that himself, but like, um, I worked my ass off on that video. It's like my pride and joy. So yeah, it is what it is. People are going to make videos about stuff that I've basically created the narrative for. And that's just what it is being a YouTuber. I'm not like upset with him about covering it or anything. Yeah. That's really, that's really all I have to say about it. So you didn't like wake up in a sweat and go, I'm going to fucking kill this guy. (laughs) No, I mean, no, it's just like. It's just like uh, I, I've done my work on it, and uh, it's whatever. I don't care, man. Like he asked me if he could use clips from my interview, and I was like, "Yeah, go ahead, man. I don't give a fuck." But yeah, you know how it is when you do all the work on it. When you do the main work on a story, and like there's gonna be other people that make videos about it, and you might be like, Ugh, "All right, whatever." But at the end of the day, we're fucking YouTubers. We operate in a code, man. Like you can't get butt hurt about that kind of shit. So shout out to Internet of J, man. I have no serious bad blood with the guy. I I talk to him on occasion. So. Would you have shit on him if he like re- like literally remade your video with the same script entirely? I think it would have been more funny than something I would have to shit on him about. I almost think that would be cool because like someone would have to go out of their way to do that. Right? <laughs> a shot for shot replica of your video just uploaded as if it was a new story. That would have just been absurd. I... I, might I want have somebody to... to do that in this community. Do a sh- like a fucking like they write down the whole script, get the inflection down, and remake somebody's like fucking 
huge video and see if they like notice. Yeah, like a like something like a reactor tier level fucking goof around where you don't know if they're being for real or not. Yeah, like if I were to go like, yo, I have the biggest fucking video on Futuristic Hub about to drop, and I like promote it for like six straight months of like it's coming, it's gonna be big, and then you watch <laughs> it and it's just me literally remaking Tom's video shot for shot. You use the same editing, you just like talk over it, and you can faintly hear me in the background. No, no, I go out of my way to remake the editing. <laughs> They'll be fucked up. But like, it's still the same video. Like it's, it's like you could tell it's not your video in terms of editing, but it's it, it, like, I'm trying to make it look like it. Izzy Tan says, I got no question, but can you tell Wavy I said hi? That's one of our patrons. Izzy Tan. Hi, What Wavy. up, Izzy Tan? Shut up. There you go. I'm pretty sure Izzy right. Tan has a fart fetish. Anyway, moving on. I did not know that. We ex- uh, it's, a, it's an inclusive channel right here. Yes, it is. X Big E X asks, "What is your personal favorite video you have made thus far?" My favorite video that I've made thus far probably would have to be the video where I get to interview the "Have You Ever Had a Dream Kid." That was just such a cool thing because that was one of my favorite memes. And uh, another thing that that showed me was like a lot of people in in my Justin has had the same criticism lobbed at him before. Like you'll make a video talking about an an open mystery and people will be in the comments and they'll be like, why are you talking about something you don't even know the answer to? This is so stupid. This is just clickbait. You're wasting our time. And then you prove him wrong. And then you fucking unlock a 20 year mystery and like basically shit on them. That's always been the power of like, I, I don't even, for lack of a better, like Reddit. Reddit could do that. Like they would find somebody or something like that. I mean, some of the memes start there but some of them also end there too Mm -hmm. it's like you're tapping into the whole internet the whole internet's now your fucking for lack of a better term it's like ethical docs yeah sometimes (laughs) uh yeah it's well it's like sometimes a lot of the times these people (laughs) ethical docs a lot of a lot of the times the people in, in in a case like that it's a person that was at one time a public figure but vanished from yes. everything. So it's not as bad. It's not like you're finding somebody that was just like... It's like, dude, the I have a dream. Uh, have you ever had a dream, kid? Okay, so I can't find his name and I don't know like his face, but I have his social security number. Yeah. <laughs> It's not like I'm making a video that's like, there is a guy that someone encountered in a supermarket back in 1995 that has no relevance to pop culture, but no one knows what happened to it. If you can t- it's like, if you can track this guy down, let me know on my email. Wait, but people do that. That's what the cold case file videos are. Like- yeah, I'm really, I'm really proud of that video. You should be. Um, you did tremendous work. Thank you. I just, I thought that was a really, it was really cool that something I could put out could in the mystery like that but yeah and obviously i'm really proud of my work on the zillion op thing that one's not as clear cut like people still are gonna shit on that guy no matter what but that was a a fun foray into long form content and it had a cool rare interview but yeah man that's i i really like when the interviews come together that's some of my favorite shit and it's interesting i've noted that a lot of my videos where i have interviews they're not even like my best performing but like they're some of my favorites it's more personal that way Mm -hmm. okay what internet rabbit hole you've ultimately regretted researching for a video says roll one of our patrons regretted looking into yeah was there like a, a two girls one cup or is you know what i mean was there something where you're like so like yo i don't necessarily know if there's one that i've regretted in the sense that like i've exposed myself to like you know people shitting on each other and like nasty things like that would be definitely more of a wang thing no way i don't, I don't want to do this anymore there is definitely a rabbit hole that at the time, I was incapable of piecing together the pieces. It was so crazy. And it's a lot of people, it's a thing a lot of people are probably familiar with. That happens to be. Do you guys know what Ram Ranch is? Oh, mm. no. No, I don't. It's Ram Ranch is a song. It's actually a series of songs created by this guy named Grant McDonald, who is a surreal musician where he makes these songs about gay cowboys fucking each other. And um, <laughs> there was a meme on Twitch where people would play these songs like they would do the song requests back when like Ice Poseidon was around. So they would have music playing or whatever, and it would play this vulgar song about gay cowboys Whoa. fucking. Right. Well, there is a intense rabbit hole about the creator of this guy, and he is apparently some kind of big bankroll ass dude that lives in Canada and has all of these really bizarre interests that I got lost in this rabbit hole 
and I couldn't figure out a way to piece the video together. So I'm almost right now suggesting that someone go out there and try to do the Grant McDonald Ram Ranch rabbit hole video. The Ram Ranch rabbit hole was one that I regretted in the sense that I was just like, at the time it was too much for me to piece together, but uh, there's something there for someone who's like an up and comer who wants to break a story. Hey, damn, Wavy, a little bit too much of that whiskey, huh? Dude, I'm picturing Wavy being like, okay, I'm going to be meeting Misha at the coffee shop at five o'clock and then him <laughs> opening his door and then three guys coming in with like the rubber suits walk over and just start putting down the plastic mat on the floor going, <laughs> you've looked into this story too much and then just pulling guns on him and killing him. Like that's what I was picturing. That's happened before. <laughs> that's what happened. Yeah, it happened with the, you're right. Like the I play Pokemon Go case. I went to the Czech Republic and like, you're you know, in too I, deep. I flew to the Czech Republic. I went to Misha's house and like I entered the secret code and I walked in and his brother fucking walked up behind me and put a formaldehyde cloth over my face and he said what you said he said you're in too deep <laughs> you and Wang run into the fucking place and you're like it's too late they already got him and you see the guy with a bullet in the back of his head with his face in soup and you're like they don't want us to find the they don't want us to find the meme guys <laughs> <laughs> like a crime drama. <laughs> I got a question, though. I love the fact that I'm hearing whispers, right? Turkey Tom is one of them. Cavos is another one. Shout out to Cavos, the big homie. This whole idea of actually flying out. And uh, I think IDEBS has done some of this stuff, right, already. But I love the idea of people like yourself or Tom and Cavos going out to people you guys made videos on, whether it's historical or actually commentary on criticism wise and sitting down with them in person and talking to them is that something you feel like you're gonna do instead of like a zoom call or skype whatever the fuck discord whatever people are using nowadays wavy do you feel like that's something that you're gonna do in the future where you, you literally go out sit down at a bar because i would love to see motherfuckers sitting down in a chill environment drinking and just bullshitting about you know ultimately can you agree or disagree with me you can disagree if you want all this stuff is just kind of bullshit at the end of the day it's just entertainment right so if you can sit back and have a beer with misha you know what i mean yeah and I, like you know what i mean but some shit like that and if you had a beer with uh you know the, the bum that killed some dude you know what i mean <laughs> whatever and you gotta kind of discuss what they're into now what's going on with them nah dude fuck that if i ever met misha i'd fucking kick him in the throat <laughs> fuck that guy i definitely do want to do that that's on the radar i think that i think that's the next sick. evolution as far as my content goes i love that i actually think that's going to be more of a a bare minimum, not necessarily a bare minimum requirement, but you started to see like people interviewing subjects of videos is becoming slightly more normal, which it should be because once upon a time, commentary was just, it was a lot of people speculating and just like talking shit about people. Now you get more, uh, People actually reaching out to subjects of videos, doing in-depth interviews and stuff like that, which is something I've enjoyed doing a lot with my channel. But the obvious graduation from that is meeting them in real life. And you can see the formula works like that's what iDubs is doing now. And it's very entertaining to see almost like a Tosh.0 style thing where you yeah. go and interview a living meme. Yeah. I like, listen, and honestly, Tom, buddy, I love you like a brother, man. But Kavos and Tom, I would think that would be probably a little bit more difficult for him to get at those people you your content is is more like historical documentation you know what i mean or more on the chill side it's almost like i'm talking to my homeboy and he's informing me on what's going on i think tom actually does a pretty good job of staying impartial in his more recent videos I, I more recent i would agree but i'm saying if he tries to reach out to somebody he made a video previously on in his younger days that would be a problem but you consistently throughout time you haven't like come out and be like yo this guy's a uh, douchebag or and put a picture of a monkey up or something you know what i mean yeah man I, it's definitely <laughs> it would definitely be feasible to do it's not a big deal to get a plane ticket and fucking set up an interview with somebody that would be cool and there's there's living memes and notable internet figures that would be down to do something like that because a lot be of them want to rekindle yeah. their former you know popularity and stuff like that and that would be great fucking content man it's Absolutely. almost like you got like a little bit of nostalgia and you got a little bit of introduction to the new gen newer generations and you have it on record as to what happened to this person because you know memes back in the day people 
people that weren't even known become popular as fuck off of a gif. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you know best off of everybody else. Just some obscure shit all of a sudden blows up and then it disappears and it blows up again. And then it's like, who is this person that I'm looking at? Yeah, yeah. You know, you ask that question, but you kind of move on. But then you come across a wavy web surf video that's telling you what happened to this person. And you're like, wait a minute. Motherfucker breaking it down. Yeah, exactly. And then you see an update video on your channel of you chilling with the dude at the bar. You know what I mean? (laughs) That would be sick. Yeah, dog. That's what I'm talking about, man. That would be crazy. Anyway. That would be great. All right, man. Let's let's wrap this motherfucker up. Wavy, you want to plug anything, say anything to the people? Subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, go to my Twitter. Check out my Twitter, Wavy Web Surf, whatever it is. And uh, yeah, dudes. I mean, you guys know me. I've been around. Oh, for sure, man. Hey, yo, man, Wavy, listen, man. I can't wait to see you when VidCon is at my house this year, right? Oh, I'm so down. You ain't dude. going to Cali. We're going to Florida. That way, we come over. We all go. go. We're going to go down here. We're going to shoot some guns. We're going to drink some drinks. I mean, you ain't going to be able to do some of the stuff I do because you're taking, right? You got a little lady with you? No, nah, yeah. I have, to, <laughs> I have to sit out on that, but I got a, I got a couple of new pistols I've been wanting to shoot. So. Oh, bring them down, baby. The cops down here are joining us. Hell. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, dude, I appreciate you guys having me on. I'm uh, a big fan of the podcast. and uh, Dude, we love you, man. You, know, you guys are my homies, and it feels good, man. <laughs> Thanks for coming on, buddy. Oh, uh, yeah. Yo, hit us up on Patreon. Go subscribe to Wavy Web Surf. And Nick and Tom, take us out. And we're gay.